Hi, I'm Laura and this is Trip Trend Trilogy and today I'm doing the Writers Are Weird tag. So I was tagged to do this by the awesome Tetmok Soul street author whose video I will link down below. His answers aren't always the most popular or mainstream author answers that a lot of people on YouTube say. However, I don't necessarily think that his answers are However, I also don't necessarily think that what most all their tubers do as writers is what all writers do. So it's kind of nice to see his perspective and that it's unique, but also that it's like, yeah, I can relate to some of those. I don't relate to the other authors. Also though, all his answers are super in depth and he films a lot of his clips in cool locations outside, which are really pretty. And it may, is good for me when I have a short attention span because I'm like, ooh, new background attention is reinvigorated <laughs> so yeah check him out this tag was originally created by Elliot Brooks whose original video I link down below so in honor of this tag I decided to dress as weird as possible so I got my Cinderella whatever this hat is called and a weird t-shirt that I colored in middle school very poorly colored obviously which this is my new aesthetic poorly colored in t-shirts and i'm gonna be answering my questions now number one do you have bizarre internet searches if so what's the weirdest one so i'm pretty sure i'd have bizarre internet searches no matter what and i don't know which one's the weirdest i don't know if i've actually looked up anything that bizarre recently i have the usual ones like involving murdering people would this kill you what happens if you get stabbed in this location how long would you bleed to you know the usual writer stuff but i also feel like i look up weird stuff just in general like did this actually happen weird mutant human animal thing i did that for a video i was like half human half whatever and then real things popped up i was like i wanted a drawing but okay that's a thing now so yeah number two do you write people you know that you dislike as villains or dumb people to kill off no in fact i read stories where this is the case and it's really not good i highly recommend you do not do that because it comes across as revenge fic no character should be purely evil or a pure stereotype of dumbness and what i've read when people do this they end up writing characters who are flat and very stereotypical and then they also tend to have every single bad thing happen to this side character as some sort of unhealthy revenge and the thing is I've had people be mean to me, I've had people bully me, and I feel like if I'm writing my them into my novels as some sort of revenge for things that happened years ago, that means I'm still stuck on what happened. Now, there are some things like when you're bullied as a kid that don't 100% go away, but I don't want to write those people into my story. I like to have more nuance, I don't like to write purely bad characters, and I don't want my story to feel like revenge fic because that's uncomfortable to read. So please don't do that. <laughs> now, it's okay if you have traits of your characters that relate to people. That's one thing. But don't write revenge fic, please. Number three, does personal hygiene sometimes come second to writing? No. I really like showering and I'm not gonna miss out on my daily shower to write more. I mean, I really like writing. But showering guys it's amazing like I would come home from school and sometimes if I was feeling bad I'd be like I'm gonna go shower but then later in the evening I'd be kind of feeling sad because I already took my shower and I don't need another one but I like it I want to do all of them <laughs> the point is like no like I will admit I'm not always the best at brushing my hair and for this channel it's currently 4 30 a.m. and this is the um eighth video i've batch filmed tonight so um yay but i showered today and i'm trying to keep myself clean and i have an open wound in my head so i really need to keep that clean because i don't want my head to get infected so no i'm fairly clean like i'm not the best at brushing my hair but i always wash my hair so even if it's a frizzy mess in a video it's clean also because my hair looks bad if i don't even shower for one day and I'm like, ew, I don't want to 
they get dirty. Like, I might be perfectly clean because I wouldn't. Because also, I grew up on the farm. When you get dirty on the farm, you get covered in manure, dirt, and playing sports. You get sweaty and gross. You have to shower. You can't not shower. Sometimes my dad would take four in a day because he gets so dirty farming. But you gotta shower because you can't sit on any of the furniture in the house. So, yeah. Be clean, guys. If you're a writer, you should still be clean. I get sometimes for you get so passionate and into what you're doing, you forget to take care of yourself. But guys, shower, please. Number four, do you go on baby name websites to help you name your characters? So, Tech Moxo was like, that's weird. Why would you do that? And I'm just like, I'm guilty of this. So actually, when I was little, there was this baby name book that my parents had in our house. I don't think they used it to name any of us even. Like, someone just gave it to them. I think they already had all their kids, and it's like, why would you give it? But anyway, it was this old book that was half pink pages and half blue pages, which is actually really cute, to defy the names based on gender, and they were in alphabetical order. I remember when I was little, me and my sister would sometimes read them because it would go through the history of each name and the meaning and I thought it was really interesting because in general, names are pretty interesting and personally when I named, and I used that actually to name characters when I was little. However, one thing is that when I name my characters, I don't like naming them people I already know and that kind of results in me not having as many names I already know to work with because I know a lot of people, especially family members, so many of them, they kind of took up all the basic names so now I have to look up weird ones and the thing is when I look up online, I'm not specifically going baby name websites, I usually look up certain contexts for a name. So I'll look up Latin names or I'll look up German names or sometimes I'll look up boys names that start with the letter B. And a lot of time they are on baby name websites because there aren't that many name websites that aren't specifically for baby names. So I also find the history of names interesting but another thing I'd like to say is that some authors like to give their characters names to like hint at them like the meaning of the name reflects meaning of the character. I don't really do that because personally it isn't real to life and I want my characters to be real life. In fact, what a person's name is says more about their parents than it does them. Now you can assume like, now one thing is in my Roman story of course I want to give my characters Latin names so that says stuff about the culture they're from but the individual name chosen says more about their parents. For example, my name's Laura, that's a pretty basic name in a lot of cultures and you might be wondering and so you might be like oh Laura she's basic or whatever maybe I am who no, who cares but if you want to know the reason why I was named Laura a very common name it actually goes back to my mother whose name is Margaret with the nickname Margie yes Margie not Margie which is what it normally is but my grandma's like it's Margaret not Margaret so you're Margie so anyway, my mom could never find her name on keychains or mugs or anything at souvenir stores. So she specifically wanted all her kids to have names they would be able to find as a souvenir, even though I never get na souvenirs with my name on them, because I never really want keychains or mugs with my name on them. I want other stuff. So the fact that I can find my name at those things doesn't say anything about me, because I don't even get them, but says something about my mother. She didn't like having a weirder, uniquer name, so I have a more common one. Whereas my middle name is actually after both of my grandmothers and my initials are to match one of my grandmothers. And you can tell my family is a type to name their children after relatives or at least middle names, not first names. But the point is my name says more about my parents and my family than it does me as an individual. It doesn't reflect my personality. So a lot of times when characters, when people give their characters names that reflect their personality, it doesn't make as much sense. So like Percy Jackson, his mom named him that because Perseus was one of the only Greek heroes to have a happy ending, which says a lot about her and what she wants for him. And that is actually very realistic. And that's the sort of thing I've done. I have one character that has sort of like that. And then to be honest, most of my characters are more like, I think your name should start with an S. Let's look at all the S names that fit the Latin specific and are for girls. Go. So yeah, that's kind of how I usually pick names. But there are specific ones where it reflects the character. So but, oh, the point is, um, baby name websites, I don't specifically look, Google baby name websites, 
But a lot of the websites with names are baby name websites, and I don't really care if it's a baby name website. It doesn't make a difference to me. But as a little kid, we did read a baby name book. And also, it was so cool how half the pages were pink and blue. I just like colored pages. And the fact that there are two color pages was crazy. Because I've never seen a book with multicolored color pages. Okay, I'm just... Okay, what, what? Five. Do you have a list of actors or actresses that would play your characters if there was an adaption made? So, no. I have one actress that looks like my protagonist. And I've googled images of her because I like to draw my characters. And sometimes it's good to have a photo reference. And I found her and I was like, hey, she looks like my character. So, I tend to have her as my go-to if I want to sketch that specific character. Whereas most of the other characters, I haven't found someone that I always sketch. But overall, not really. I'm not that into actors or actresses in general. And... Honestly, I'm not that like obsessed with the idea of casting my characters. I like to imagine them in my head as their own people and I don't really keep up with actors or actresses and most of them don't look just like my characters. Even the one I picked doesn't look just like my character. She just has some facial similarities that I like to use when drawing my character as a sort of reference. So no. And if you're wondering, it's India Elsie for my protagonist Sonia in my Roman story. Number six, have you ever stared at a stranger because they look like one of your characters? So there were two times where I saw people who looked like Sonia. They didn't actually look exactly the same to each other, but they had enough similarities to my character that I was like, you could play her in a movie. And I sort of like looked at them at the corner of my eye for like a little bit, but then I stopped because I have other things to do one was during class so i was kind of like paying attention during class or uh, sleeping but um, <laughs> but the other one i was getting chick-fil-a and i was like i gotta eat food i'm not just gonna stay at someone but besides that no there were only two instances both at college two girls that looked like the same character but didn't look exactly like each other it was more like hey you would be good if I wanted to draw her because I like drawing references. But I didn't take a picture because I'm not creepy. Though I've heard someone has done that before. I don't remember who. I think it was actually a real person that I saw in real life. Which is weird. Don't take pictures of people. Just remember in your heart. But yeah. So not really. Twice I kind of like did the glancing. But I've never been like straight on stare. Number seven. Do you talk to yourself to work through scenes? If so, where do you talk to yourself? So... Not really. I don't really talk out loud to myself. Sometimes I like to make up songs and sing them out loud. Sometimes they're like two people in real life or just in general. Or sometimes they're about my characters. I'll like sing a song that my character would sing if it was a musical because that would be awesome because my characters break into dramatic emotional songs. But no, I don't talk to myself. I just sing. Pfft, weirdos. <laughs> Singing's the way to go. Singing's so much more normal. Number eight. While writing, do you make the expressions your characters are making? Not really. I don't really even think I do that much. Like, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill on the face. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not weird for this question. Number nine. Do you ever practice answering interview questions in case you make it big? Nope. I've never done that. I've never even thought about it. I mean, I think I might have like seen an author interview. I was like, oh, that'd be fun to do, but no. Not really. Don't think about it. And then that's, that's too much success. It's unrealistic. I'm just going to be disappointed. That's pretty negative. But no, I don't really think about that. <laughs> no, I haven't. I do like think of conversations in my head, but not that. Number 10. Do you have a soundtrack or playlist for your book or scenes from your book? Yes. Now, I don't have a soundtrack, but I do like to compile songs that remind me of books. Now, to be honest, literally any song I listen to usually results in me thinking of my stories. I'm pretty inclined to daydream about my stories, no matter the situation. But yes, I like to compile them. Now, I know some people like to structure them like a song for each character or song for each scene. I don't really do this. I kind of just pick songs and if they fit a character or if they fit a relationship or they fit a scene that's where i put them but i don't get a song for each of them because i at one point did like make a character playlist song and i realized i didn't give a crap about like half of them and they were kind of pointless so i just picked the songs i want so maybe i'll pick like three for my protagonist at different points in the story and none for a different character because 
they're not as important to me. But yeah, so I do like to compile music. I don't treat it very seriously. I would love to share it with you because I'm super into it. And I love having songs that I can think daydream about my story while listening to. Because it's so, I enjoy daydreaming <laughs> too much. I daydream too much. It takes up too much of my time. But the point is, yes, I like to do that. But it's not, I don't have one chapter by chapter, scene by scene. So it's not very well structured, but I do it and I really enjoy it. I have so many playlists. I also have playlists that just have like songs that make me think of a vibe. So I have an entire playlist of songs that make me think of fight scenes. Playlists I have songs that make me think of the apocalypse. And they can fit multiple stories, but they fit that tone, which I really like to do. Because sometimes I'm just in the vibe to think about action. Anyway, those are all the questions. So I tag Savvy, the adorable author, Julian Greystoke, A World of Words, JLW Reads, Fictional Fangirl, Catherine Francis, Lauren Severe, Rain Adkins, and last but certainly not least, Aphrodite Lee, because I know she will have some fun questions for this. In fact, I know all of them will have fun questions for this. But yeah, so I'm excited to see if they do this. No pressure if you don't want to, but you've been tagged. So if you do it, you can be like, yeah, someone tagged me. Woo, I feel special. You should feel special even if you don't want to do it. Well, not that special. It's just me, but oh, whatever. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any thoughts on my answers, please leave them down below. And I'll see you later.